Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host Tom Downey coming at you once again from Indianapolis at the NFL Combine. No more snow, although it is still very cold here. Defensive line linebackers were the media interviews today with the players, and there were quite a few that have met with the Dallas Cowboys. So we figured I'd, we'd take advantage and mention the players who have had formal meetings with the Cowboys, plus some informal meetings, and discuss those players as well for today's video. We will begin with a receiver. That is Michael Pittman. Now, I don't know very many receivers. I'm sure there will be more who have met with the Cowboys, but the one is Michael Pittman out of USC. Great size. He's 6'4", 223. Fantastic hands. He dropped 2.7% of his passes. That's super low this past year per pro football focus. He had a formal meeting with them. Now, he is aiming to beat a 4-5, 40-yard dash. I don't know if he's going to run that slow tonight. And from a very selfish perspective, I kind of hope that he doesn't. If he can run a, a low 4-5 instead of breaking it, maybe the Cowboys could get him in round four. I think he'd be a great fit as a bigger body possession receiver, and I am open to taking a receiver in round four and beyond in this year's NFL draft. Now, I got a whole list of names here as well for informal meetings. A lot of them on the defensive line. I want to shout out my boys Jonah Tolls and Mark Lane, all three of us down here at, uh, at the media center, getting the information for you guys. So some informal meetings on offense. Jet Anderson for TCU. He will qualify as a local guy, so he can come in and not count as an official visit. Denzel Mims, the Baylor receiver, had an informal meeting. And then Arkansas tight end C.J. O'Grady as well. So overall... And I'll make this the pin comment so you guys can reply there. Who is your dream target regardless of round? Any round out there. It can be even in round five. Who is your dream target for the Dallas Cowboys? You guys let me know in the comment section. I'm hoping to talk to Antoine Winfield tomorrow. Hopefully he's met with the Cowboys. That's certainly one of my options on there. Let me know what you guys think. If you are watching on YouTube, you might get it with an ad break here. If you do, scroll on down to the pin comment. You can cast your votes right there. All right, another offensive player. It's not a very deep offensive list so far. I'm sure we'll get more later. That is Jared Pinckney, the tight end out of Vanderbilt, who we've also mentioned on a previous show. I like the size, 6'4", 257. Said he wants to run a sub 4'7", 40-yard dash. He has a formal meeting with the Dallas Cowboys. Noteworthy in light of the Cowboys' apparent desire to, or at least willingness, I should say, to move on from one Jason Witten. Now, he dropped off in a big way from 2018 to 2019. That certainly is a big time red flag. Although I do want to make note, the Vanderbilt quarterback play was pretty horrible. I think that's a big factor there. I'm not too concerned about it for the Dallas Cowboys. It, it is noteworthy, but I think you can blame a lot of that on the quarterback play. Now the drills and, and the testing, those start tonight beyond the bench press that's been going on here. 40-yard dash, of course, is the big one. So there is an over-under bet with our friends over on BetDSI fastest 40-yard dash time, not player, just the time, 4.29. Is it going to be over that number or under? What I'm really asking here and what they're really asking is, does Henry Ruggs run below a 4.29? I'm typing in yes, I think he will. I put some money down on that one myself, and you can too. Head over to BetDSI, it's chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code COWBOYS120. It gets you a 120% deposit bonus. You put down 50 bucks, boom, extra 60 coming your way. On top of that, to bet. Hopefully Henry Ruggs does it. Hey, you guys should bet too. There are also other combine prop bets available. So head over now, chatsports.com slash bet. That promo code COWBOYS120. All right, some other informal meetings. I don't have to glance down at my notes because I don't have them memorized. But several offensive linemen the Cowboys have informally met with. Alex Taylor, South Carolina State. Logan Stenberg from Kentucky. Auburn offensive lineman Prince Tango Winogo. Uh, Cole Cabral out of Arizona State as well. Charlie Heck in there. And just a quick note here before we dive into more names. The difference between formal and informal. I'll spend some time here. Formal, you only have a certain amount of those for an NFL team. The coaching staff is normally heavily involved in that one. Front office members. There's a set time limit as well. Informal is basically a quick little meet and greet. It's not very long. It's either to set something up later, get some quick background information. So noteworthy, but the formal ones are the ones to really pay attention to. All right, other players. Uh, Hakeem Adenajai. I hope I got that right. Don't have my pronunciation in front of me here. Uh, he plays at Kansas. 
is also a local qualifier for the Cowboys, just like Jet Anderson. Trey Adams met with the Cowboys. Tremaine Ankrum out of Clemson. Adams from Washington. And then Tristan Colon Castillo out of Missouri also had an informal meeting with the Dallas Cowboys. All right, defense. This is where most of the meetings are. We'll begin with Ross Blacklock out of TCU. Now, he technically has not had a formal meeting, but I want to mention him here because he told me that the Cowboys have expressed interest in getting him down to a visit for the star. Now, just like uh, a Denajai and Jet Anderson, Ross Blacklock, as a TCU grad, as a Fort Worth player, he will qualify as a local visit. So Dallas can bring him in, and that will not ca- count against their limited official team visits after the combine ends. I am curious to see how Blacklock tests. He had a really nice year this past year. Pressure rate was, was pretty good. I think he's a really good athlete. But the weigh-in didn't really go his way. Not great arm length. He's under 290. Uh, the cutoff for the no fatties or for the fatties only allowed campaign is 300. Eh, so we'll see about Pac. Although I, I, I do still like him. I don't think he's a, a 17 overall player, but maybe 51 second round. That could make some sense. He's still kind of raw, but athletically he fits what teams are looking for these days in the NFL. All right. Next up is Rashard Lawrence, the LSU defensive lineman. Good, good arm length, 6'2", 3'8", is what he weighed in at. It was an informal meeting, but I mentioned this one in particular because he says the Cowboys are looking to set up a formal meeting with him and, and or a different visit. So we'll see if that ends up coming true, but I did want to make note of it here. I'm curious to see how Rashard Lawrence will play. I thought he was a little bit better in 2018. Maybe took a, a bit of a step down with, with guys like Caleb on Chasen, making a whole bunch of plays. I think he's more of a day three guy, but added depth, always important for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, a big name here is Javon Kinlaw, the defensive tackle from South Carolina. Many of you want him on your team. The the way in numbers were bonkers. All right, get the 6'5", 324. That's pretty darn big. Wingspan is 83 and 6 eighths inches. They do weird numbers here. It's just, it's three-fourths. We can do the math. From the combine data I've got, dating back to like 1999, that is top three among defensive linemen for wingspan. Uh, Normally, I call them vines. Kinlaw called, called them hockey sticks. And I'm absolutely going to take that. Dude's, a, I think, a fantastic athlete. Not going to do drills, but he's a fantastic athlete here. I love him as a prospect. I would love to get him at number 17 overall. His size, length, explosiveness, and production normally means you're going to be a damn good NFL player. That's the issue. Uh, from the conversations I've had here at the Combine, I would be pretty damn surprised if Javon Kinlaw made it to number 17 overall. I know the Colts love him, and the Colts themselves don't think that he's going to end up being on the board for them in round one. So maybe we should start looking at other prospects despite the desire to end up getting Javon Kinlaw. All right, Marlon Davidson is next up here. This one's really fascinating to me. Kid out of Auburn had a very nice senior bowl. 6'3", 3'8", three, three, inches, 303, so he fits He fits the, the Fatties Only campaign 2020. Met with the Cowboys last night. That That is Wednesday night here, I believe. Yeah, it's Wednesday night. Days all blend together, sorry. Uh, said he had a great time with the Cowboys, enjoyed all of it, and, his, and the Cowboys are actually one of his favorite meetings he's had so far at the Combine. Now, he has balked up since leaving Auburn. He was saying how he didn't mean to do that. He had, didn't plan to add a bunch of weight and get above 300 pounds, but it's just been all muscle. He's been training, and he's happened to add weight along the way. He doesn't turn 22 until after the NFL draft. Good pressure rate. I like him as a bit of some position flex. Uh, talking with some people, they say, hey, maybe you could do this. Maybe you play him as a base defensive end, kick him in inside on passing downs in a Tyrone Crawford type mold. I, mold, I like that idea. I love him best on the inside as a three technique, but I'm down doing both of those things. The question is, where does Davidson end up going? Does he sneak into the back end of round one? I'm not convinced he's going to be on the board in round two. If he is, I actually really like that fit for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, we'll stay in the same state. Raquan Davis, the Alabama, the defensive tackle, of course, out of Alabama, fantastic size. That's the number one thing that jumps out to me. 6'6 six, six and 1'8, 3'11, and he's got room for more weight. I mean, he carries it really well. He's pretty much chiseled among, among the defensive linemen there. He told me that he thought that that visit went well, and Dallas likes his game. And I think that's reasonable. My issue is. Raquan Davis does not bring you much in the pass rush. That's just not who he's been. He had great sack numbers in 2017, has not repeated them since. And looking at, at the pressure rates I've got, it was a little bit more of a fluky season there in the end. Simply doesn't make enough plays in the passing game. But as a run stopper, he's really good. 
And at 311, he fits the size I'm looking for on the defensive line. I don't want him in round one at all. I don't want him in round two. If he slides a little bit and you're still looking for, a, I think, a nose guard type, I think Raekwon Davis could fit that mold. If you can develop his pass rush, maybe all of a sudden you're looking in a lot better shape there for the Dallas Cowboys. I just don't want to spend that premium pick on Raekwon Davis. I do want big guys on the defensive line, but the Fatties Only campaign still prefers players who can also rush the passer at least a little bit. And we are coming to you guys live from the NFL Combine, so hit that big red button. We're doing some defensive players that have had Combine meetings so far with the Cowboys. I'm going to try and do the exact same thing tomorrow and follow all kinds of defensive backs. I'm sure there are going to be a lot meeting. The Cowboys defensive staff is here interviewing players and checking them out. So hit that big red button. We'll do another video for you guys tomorrow on Friday and then, of course, throughout the NFL offseason, through the NFL draft, beyond it, and going forward here on the Cowboys Report. All right, next up, yet another defensive lineman. That is Justin Matabike out of Texas A&M. 6'2", 239, almost 6'3". So a little light on the weight, and so it's okay, though. He's a three technique. That's that's his main area. 33 and a half inch arm. So I, I like the length and the size, even though he's not that the, the biggest guy heavy-wise. This might be one where you're looking to be okay not going 300 pounds there. Remember, Maurice Linguist, the Texas standard defensive backs coach, is now the Cowboys coach, so uh, Matt Adike said it was fun to catch up with him. He's a three technique. I think that's his role there. I'll also make note here, he is a local qualifier, so he's probably not going to be one of the official NFL pre-draft visits for the Cowboys, but I bet you'll see him come by as a local guy during that day. He could be in play in round two or if the Cowboys get lucky in round three. Baylor kid is next up here. That is James Lynch, who he's kind of a tweener. I asked him, like, hey, where NFL team is going to play you? And he kind of gave the answer I thought I was going to get, that, well, some want to play him as a five technique. That is that base defensive end most commonly known in a 3-4 scheme, a 3-4 defensive end lined up over the over the uh, tackle area. And then a three technique, which is kind of that one-gapping guard. I'm not really sure where I end up playing with him, but he really enjoyed his visit with Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys. The biggest note that I came away from that actually was that during the Mike McCarthy visit with James Lynch, there were 20 to 25 people in that room with James Lynch, all of them watching some film, asking questions, getting to know each other. I like that McCarthy brought so many players down for this particular uh, pre-draft process. Big breakout year at Baylor. I got some athletic concerns. I'm curious to see how he tests. I wonder if the Panthers and Matt Rule will take him. I'm just not sure, at least for me, and I'm going to watch more film. I do value the athletic testing as well in terms of how I grade players out. I don't know if he's a round three guy or a round five guy for me. I think for that one, we're going to have to wait a little bit. Josiah Coatney, the defensive tackle from Ole Miss, he's next up on my list. 6'3 and 3'8, 308 pounds, like the arm length as well. Met with the Cowboys last night here at the NFL Combine. He's a little raw, he's a little old, he's a day three guy, but I think between Coatney, potentially James Lynch, you're looking at guys like uh, we, we, we mentioned. Rashard Lawrence as well. That indicates to me the Cowboys are at least looking at the possibility of adding a day three defensive lineman, even if they take someone earlier on in the, in the draft as well. I got a special deal for you guys. Head over to Fanatics. It's chatsports.com slash Cowboys hats. 40% off all types of Cowboys hats. And on top of that, they just added some free shipping for some of these hats as well. So you can save money on the actual price and you get it shipped for free. It is chatsports.com slash Cowboys hats up to 40% off. Head on over there and to make life easier for you guys, I've got that link in the comments and in the description. All right, moving on now to some more defensive players. Informal meeting style. I almost blew right through that there. A lot of defensive linemen on here. So again, I'll glance down on my notes because I don't have it memorized. Two Syracuse players, Kendall Coleman and uh, Alton Robinson. Uh, Jason Strobridge with, with, with North Carolina. NC State's Laurel Murchison. Uh, Florida edge rusher Jonathan Grenard, which I was intrigued by. And then I also want to make note here just briefly, Jabari Zaniga told me he met with the Cowboys at the Senior Bowl, but did not meet with them at the NFL Combine. Tulsa defensive lineman Travis Gibson says he met with them. That was an informal meeting, but he's also a local qualifier. So I would venture to say he will also be a member of that local day for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Kadir Shepard out of Ole Miss, Sean Zervis, Mississippi State, Broderick Washington from Texas A&M, and then maybe the name you might have heard of, McTelvin again, the Arkansas defensive lineman. 
All right, edge rushers now. I've kind of taken a while to get here, but Curtis Weaver is one of them, and this should not be a surprise. He's a Boise State kid, and we know how the Cowboys like those Boise State players. The, pr the production is pretty much out of this world for Curtis Weaver. It's, it's just crazy how good he's been at Boise State. Three years of just dominating competition. Now, He's a bit of a weird fit. He's a little light to be a full-time hand-in-the-ground defensive end. And I don't know if he's athletic enough to be a stand-up 3-4. I think NFL teams are a bit confused on that as well. As long as he does not tank the combine, I got to think he goes maybe not round one, but round two. It's tough to pass on that level of production unless you're a bad athlete. So Curtis Weaver, I am definitely going to be watching during athletic, athletic testing drills. I've got concerns. I value the testing probably more than maybe I should because I don't always trust my eye. I know that I know the drills are not always perfect, but if he tests poorly, that could really end up hurting his draft stock. Now, do you guys want more Boise State players or have had or have you had enough? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. You can type Y for yes and for no. I'll throw out one other Boise name to watch out for. John Hightower. I have not talked to him yet here at the Combine, but Boise player with speed. That could end up filling a role for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, next up here, Julian Aquara. Now, Mark Lane, who's also down here with me, covers the Cowboys for USA Today. Uh, he says that, don't get excited, but Aquara told him that he's going to have an, a formal meeting with the Cowboys, but it might be more of a follow-up type of deal just to catch up on other stuff. Aquara's coming off some medical issues and uh, a broken fibula, to, to be exact, so that could be what the Cowboys are looking into there. But it is noteworthy, 6-4 and a quarter. 252 with really long arms, 34 inches right there. I'm super intrigued by that. I think he's best as a 3-4 as a edge, but you can play him in a 4-3. You're fine. He's going to rush the passer. He's got great athleticism. I like him. Not at 17. Maybe a trade-down target. I think that could be an option there, but the Cowboys are at least exploring different edge rush options. All right, last guy on our list till we get some defensive backs tomorrow. That is Logan Wilson, the linebacker out of Wyoming. 6'2 and 1 8 241. It was funny because they gave him some slot and, and the safety reps last year at Wyoming. But he's a good tackler, 10.3%. The coverage reps, despite playing slot and safety, that's kind of your red flag. There are very few man reps. I don't know how he's going to fit in that, in that mold. I think he could test surprisingly well. We'll see, of course, what ends up happening there. But I am curious to what happens with Logan Wilson. He's been at Wyoming for a long time. Really good production. He's a good football player. I don't know where he goes. I haven't dove too far into him, but I, maybe he's a day three guy. And that's if you're the Cowboys. I think that's where you're looking to add a linebacker because you don't want to spend a premium pick. Not with Leighton Van Der Esch there, assuming he's healthy. You have to assume that he is. Jalen Smith, you, 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 don't have, you don't have the snaps for it. But with special teams being a renewed area of interest for the Cowboys, maybe Logan Wilson could end up being one of those late round targets. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.